Howdy, guys. How are you guys doing? Today, we're going to do finally part two of Woodrow Wilson from The Cynical Historian, which part one was amazing. I think part two is going to be even more interesting because it's about his own presidency. You know, he was the president during World War I. Uh, he created or promoted the League of Nations. And, you know, he did a few things before, prior to his presidency that were really messed up. And right now we're going to see what he did when he was president, which I'm going to guess it's really bad. And before continuing, I would just love to tell you that I am starting to design some merch, not merch from like the channel, but just merch about like, uh, you know, U.S. presidents and like historical. I'm, I'm thinking about selling maps and, and it's going to be interesting right now. I'm just starting. So, uh, you know, check out what I have on the description. It's just like a shirt and a pillow and, and, and it's about George Washington. So. Uh, it's a very basic design, you know, as time goes on, I would improve those designs, but it's just the beginning. So if you would like to support the channel, especially if you're from the U.S. or Europe, you can go check that out. And I would really, really appreciate if you did. Without further ado, let's check this video out. And also another little thing, uh, I just got a copyright strike, uh, which it's really bad. <laughs> so now as to avoid this happening again, what I'm going to do is be a lot more careful with all the copyright stuff, which means that I'm going to have to edit the videos a lot more. I'm going to have to cut some sections that maybe I don't talk too much. So I hope that you don't mind that. I don't want to get this channel terminated or banned for like three weeks. Uh, so in order to avoid that, I'm just going to do that for, for now and see if it works. Hey, Cypher here. This is the second part of a two-part series on Woodrow Wilson. The first part was about his life prior to 1912, Man, the and this is great. his entire presidency. I highly recommend going and seeing the previous one if you haven't seen it, because I'm going yeah. to be referencing it Also, go it check plenty. my reaction to the, the and, first part. Well, bashing on Woodrow Wilson is just fun. Damn it, Wilson! <laughs> I just love how he says, like, Wilson! Like, yeah, screw you, man. He managed to pass... Woodrow Wilson began working immediately after taking the presidency. He managed to pass several key pieces of legislation, which he called the New Liberty, which he had actually campaigned for during the election. This is actually where we started to see the shift in the word liberalism, because this New Liberty was essentially expansion of the government in order to protect people's liberty, or so said the propaganda. All of these things were passed within the first couple years of his presidency. He created the Federal Reserve System, which replaced the Central Bank, which had been functioning okay, all the, the way Federal back Reserve. since 1846. This vastly expanded the Reserve System's power and outreach, while also making it somehow more independent of the government than the previously named Independent Reserve. It was hoped that the Fed, as it's called, would be able to stem future panics, but they don't really have a good record on that at all. <laughs> then there was the creation of the Federal Trade Commission, which came along with an expansion in the Sherman Antitrust Act called the Clayton Act. The FTC lessened the legal proceedings that were necessary to go trust busting, while also making the regulation of monopolistic practices more easily enforced. Of course, it also stopped trust busting of certain monopolies by categorizing them in particular ways, such as utility companies. In the midst of all this oh. supposed freedom, Wilson quietly allowed his cabinet to start segregating the federal workforce. As black people started losing their jobs and being segregated into more menial positions, the whole problem became well known, despite Wilson doing this pretty covertly. This kind of executive overreach hadn't happened before, yeah. let alone the obvious racism in it. So Republicans protested fiercely. A few civil rights leaders met with Wilson, trying to dissuade him of the whole policy. But of course, Wilson was quite a racist, and he thought that this was actually part of his whole new liberalism. By making race what? relations better, like that makes any sense, blacks were being liberated. How does, how does, I mean, well, of course, most of you watching, I hope all of you watching disagree with the whole segregation thing. You know, that's pretty, uh, I don't know, a basic thing to disagree with. But how would that make, why would he think segregation would make relationships between the races better? Don't you see? In reality, it diminished their opportunities significantly. And in one of the places they used to be able to expect relatively equal opportunity employment. 
Wilson essentially brought Jim Crow to the federal government as part oh. of his whole new freedom. As if to connect this racism to his historical writing, Wilson screened The Birth of a Nation in 1915, which discreetly quoted yeah, we saw this at the White House. By Gosh. screening it there, a first in presidential history, he legitimized the movie. He even said, It is like writing history with lightning, and my only regret is that it is all so terribly true. As a what? prominent lost cause historian, his ignorance of the truth was a prominent part of pretty much everything he ever did. The Ku Klux Klan came into being again, Holy basically because shit. of I this mean, movie. Like, all these pictures have, like, it's almost like a physical reaction of, of, of kind of like fear even. Like, as a Hispanic or as a Mexican, it'd be horrible living through these times. And Wilson's support of it, despite prominent historians trying to fight against the falsehoods it fostered. This is how based on a true story movies can truly cause a problem. Lastly, the 16th yeah. Amendment yeah, had no been stop. passed before his presidency, but he presided over the creation of legislation that created the graduated income tax system that we live in today. Because of this tax mm. system, Democrats lowered tariffs to historic lows. Those tariffs would bounce back again under Republican control after Wilson's administration, but from then on, they would continuously be lowered. Amazingly, all of this was done in the first couple years of Wilson's administration. He was following a lot of trends from his predecessors, but in many ways it was a more conservative approach to progressivism. As a yeah, I mean, Taft was more conservative than uh, Roosevelt. And now, you know, Wilson was a lot more conservative than Taft. As opposed to what Roosevelt and Taft had been doing prior. These reforms centered more and more power on the federal government and brought much of it under the control of the executive branch. Just as Wilson had complained decades before, he was basically trying to rid the government of its checks and balances in order to center power on a great orator, such as himself. Yet all of this change took a back seat to an even worse power grab. Woodrow Wilson reformulated the way we think about international diplomacy. To this day, most policymakers can be referred to as Wilsonian. The basic idea Wilsonian. is that American values should be spread across the world through America's foreign policy. This whole thing took the old isolationism and combined it with a new this form of This is something I never really understood. Pushing aside those who are now called realists. I'm not joking. After the whole Philippines debacle, which was still going on at the beginning of his presidency, America was fed up with colonialism. But instead of learning from that mistake, Wilson wanted to impose a new form of imperialism. So American exceptionalism turned to fighting to make the world safe for democracy. As he would say in his 1917 State of the Union address, calling for intervention. The problem is, it's fighting for... You know, it's funny because I don't, I never understood why war would make a place safer. Now, it is true that I do believe that America as the global superpower is better or would, would have been better than a place like China or Russia. Uh, however, you know, that doesn't mean that America is perfect. And I just, yeah, I'm just really against inter interventionalism. Democracy elsewhere, or as the Atlantic puts it, he made the world safe for U.S. Oh my God. The beginnings of this were with his policies to Oh no, come on, come on. <laughs> Venezuela, Nicaragua, and Mexico. Come on, brother. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm mad. I'm legit towards triggered. Latin America. Wilson had inherited a couple of wars. One was the dwindling moral wars in the Philippines, which quickly ended, but the other was yeah, you gotta feel really bad for the Philippines. Uh, Spanish-American War, America totally wrecked uh, the motherland, which is Spain, at least for me. And then they just kind of inherited uh, the Philippines, Guam, Puerto Rico, I think Cuba for a few years, right? Before it became independent. Uh, but the Philippines, there was no independence deal as far as I know, of course, so... Yeah, they would have a really rough time fighting the Spanish and then the Americans. It's fairly different. 
Taft and I have a lot of viewers Nicaragua from the Philippines too, so... ...as part of their election process, and had left a legation there as an occupying force. Wilson continued the occupation and used it as an example for further wars. Oh, the God. U.S. had been intervening in foreign affairs in a number of ways as part of Roosevelt's whole speak softly and, and carry, carry a big, big stick, stick. Yeah. policy, but under the progressive Republican... Pre Not a fan, but come on, you can't hate on Teddy Roosevelt. ...presidents, they were supposed to be fairly quick affairs... That oh, 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 so we have a lot of stuff here. Uh, the Panamanian Revolution, Honduras Intervention, Santo Domingo Affair, Party Carries Incident, Cuban Intervention, First Nicaraguan Intervention, uh, Second Liberia and Griba War, and the second Nicaraguan intervention. Fans only American. Plus, that they were kind of uh, into uh, the, the Mexican interests. Revolution, too. Wilson took that whole idea and added his whole racist and paternalistic ideology. He started meddling in Latin American politics. The U.S. had been turning away from imperialism. Oh, look at this. You know, uh, from a, a small colony baby to... Uh, you know, it just grows fatter and fatter. But Wilson brought it back full circle. He started by denying the legitimacy of the Mexican government. As tensions rose with Germany, he started by denying the oh. legitimacy of the Mexican... Denying the legitimacy of the Mexican government. That is interesting. I did not knew that Woodrow Wilson specifically then, uh, invalidated the, the Mexican government. In government. As tensions rose with Germany, he used their meddling in Mexican politics as a reason to invade Mexico, which happened in 1914 with a short-lived yet very bloody affair. Then he used the same reasoning on Haiti in 1915. Despite having pulled out of Tampico, Mexico in 1914, he invaded Haiti and fully occupied it in 1915. The U.S. completely took over the country and tried to institute a stable regime. Oh this was God. the first time in American history in which the U.S. directly intervened and changed a regime through military force. There had been numerous interventions that had supported Whoa. such efforts before, but never anything directly Whoa. by the U.S. Supposedly, this was for the betterment of the tottering the Haitian Union Republic, but instead, it turned into an occupation that... There's, there's a really good Prime show. Uh, it's called Startup, and there's a lot of uh, Haitian culture uh, because it's Miami. Not portrayed in the best way because it's a Haitian gang in Miami, so it's not like the most accurate or the most beautiful. Uh, but I, I they do have the slogan of the, I guess, Haitian flag lasted until 1934 and the son and of the protagonist is named uh, Toussaint government. and Wilson I think that's the name of like the mistakes uh, because he did it again and father again of Haiti. using his whole idea of helping other countries to self-determine their own affairs he invaded would, the Dominican this would start a really dangerous trend. right across the island from Haiti under the same stupid ideology that war lasted until 1924 and did absolutely nothing Safe for the U.S. being able to control their customs revenue until 1941. Because ultimately, greed is what always underlies the decision to intervene. But an old-style intervention <laughs> did come through years. during his presidency. Well, no, no, there had been a bit years. of a border war with Mexico since their 1911 Oh my god! Started. I do know a little bit about this, but I haven't uh, seen someone making a video of this. What do you guys think? Would you like to see? Us watching the Mexican border war. First of all, that thumbnail, though. But I think it was basically a bunch of Mexican revolutionaries causing damage to some American border towns and, like, raiding and, and doing just bad stuff. So the Americans were about to invade. I, I don't know if Americans' troops actually entered. It kind of spilling Mexico. over into our borders. Yeah. Up until Wilson's presidency, the U.S. had been trying to keep the Mexican Revolution in Mexico, and that's it. Despite numerous battles crossing the border, illegal usage of the border as a safe haven, and the chaos of the situation kind of disrupting U.S. commerce. But with Wilson at the helm, he steered U.S. policy into picking favorites in Mexico. When one of those favorites went rogue and Ooh. sacked a few American towns, it was time for a good old punitive expedition to root out Pancho Villa. The Carranza government didn't like General Pershing's troops running amok 
and trying to root out the bandit, so they turned around and started fighting Americans. It turned into a mess, as interventions yeah. inevitably Huge do. Huge political in mess. In the meantime, Wilson had to run for re-election. The Republicans were still in disarray from 1912, and oh, they ended God. up nominating a lukewarm candidate, but Wilson came close to losing. World War I had begun in 1914, and the entire race centered on how neutral the U.S. should be, with both candidates actually claiming to believe in neutrality. But we all know Wilson had already undermined that neutrality, but most people didn't notice. Well, with the U.S. occupation still kind of happening in northern Mexico, the Zimmerman telegram came Ooh. out, and the U.S. entered World War I with a full declaration of war a couple months later. But we pulled out of Mexico before the declaration. There was a Thank lot you. of opposition nice. to this war at first, but Wilson still believed. So yeah, Zimmerman telegram, telegram sent uh, from Germany to Mexico, basically asking for Mexico to invade and and Germany promising the lost territories from the Mexican-American War and like some money and help. Uh, it was, of course, really, it was a really stupid idea. And at least I'm glad that the Mexican government at the time were smart enough to realize that it was just going to backfire tremendously. Believed in the whole great and, and or like it, we were going to be in a, a German puppet. You know, it's like being an American puppet or a German puppet. And, you know, Americans are a little better. So. Greater excuse for power. At, at the time, of course. And this was a heck of a golden opportunity to grab power. Because of the heavy opposition to the war, Wilson managed to silence a lot of it through legislation. The first wow. bill came quickly after the declaration. Oh, of yeah. I've heard about this. I've heard about this. Uh, basically, people criticizing the war or the army would get, I don't know if in jail or imprisoned or fined or simply censored. But or this is really bad. called the Espionage Act. Yeah. You guys have probably heard of the whole limitation of free speech that says that you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. Well, that's actually from the Supreme Court, who decided that this act was constitutional, even though it mandated the arrest of anyone who said that the war was wrong. Protesters represented what the court called a clear and present danger to the recruitment of... Yeah, I mean, just imagine that, like, in the U.S., the home of free speech being arrested for criticizing a war. That's pretty messed up. Soldiers. It was one of the worst of course, decisions have the Supreme Court has all the right ever made. That. Yet, the Espionage Act is actually still in effect, though it's been amended quite a few times to be less overbearing. Next was the Sedition oh, Act, which no was an way. even worse violation of the First Amendment. This was essentially just a bunch of amendments to the Espionage Act in order to make it more brutal. Beyond just speaking in any way that could interfere with the war effort, the Sedition Act made it a prosecutable offense to willfully utter, print, write, or publish any disloyal, profane, scurrilous... About the or government of the U.S., bro, this is some China stuff. You can write uh, or publish or, or anything other, like... A de being disloyal to the government, imagine that. Imagine how just insane that sounds. Again, that's some China stuff. Abusive language about the form of government. Or look, or the constitution, or, or the military, or, or the flag of the U.S., or the uniform of the army, or the uniform. Of, yeah, it's, it's the flag, the constitution, the army. Of the United God. States. Or the Constitution of the United States, yeah. or the military or naval forces of the United States, insane, or the bro. flag. People were being rounded up for sedition, and at least a thousand convictions were handed out. <laughs> Worse still, this continued until after the war, when the Sedition Act was repealed in 1920, at the tail end of Wilson's presidency. All of this was directly asked for by Wilson prior to World War I in 1950 and was urged further by the U.S. entering the war. Along with these gross violations came the creation of two domestic spying agencies, both of which were engineered domestic. specifically to keep people subjected to the war effort. First was the rebranding of the Military Intelligence Division. The MID was obviously meant for war, but it started keeping tabs on potential <laughs> spies, including an entire division dedicated to... Negro subversion. If you think this is a bit of Ooh. an overreach, just you wait. An organization was created called the American Protective what the fuck? League. 
They numbered possibly as many as 250,000 Americans. They essentially became private domestic spies, and Wilson allowed them to work with the Bureau This is basically spying on your own citizens. ...of investigation to catalog pretty much everything. In fact, this is where J. Edgar Hoover got his start. Working together, they worked with Jesus. the BOI and the MID to commit such incredible violations of civil spying liberties on your own. I mean, as to make... The government is still spying us today, but back then, like the criticism of the government or, or the war or like the flag. Make the CIA and NSA. Imagine, of, imagine saying something like, oh, yeah, the flag is kind of ugly and then you're arrested. Jealous today. Domestic spying I mean, in the United like States was never worse than in 1918 and 1919. Of course, it gets a lot worse. A further way of stopping disloyalty was with a rash of lynchings across the United States. It became an epidemic Ooh. for three years, yep. and Wilson turned a blind eye because apparently he liked lynching. He was more attentive to branding the war itself. In January of 1918, he had come up with a way to make the war seem like a crusade for democracy and announced it oh. with his 14 points. They all seemed noble, you know, like making the world more open to trade, self-determination for nations, lesser colonialism, Belgium, and the creation France. of a League of Nations. Of course, all of these things were designed with ulterior they motives. Bullshit. Freer trade meant that smaller economies couldn't protect themselves with tariffs. Self-determination was a dog whistle for imposed American-style republics, Colonialism was only going to be replaced with Wilson's new style of imperialism, and the impotence of the League of Nations makes the United Nations seem like an omnipotent utopian organization by comparison. Wilson almost immediately started yeah. violating his own 14 points when he authorized the Russian intervention only a couple months later. Point 6 clearly states, Russia should be given an unhampered and unembarrassed territory. opportunity for the independent determination of her own political development and national policy. <laughs> Not on Wilson's yeah. watch. So let's send American troops under spurious reasons to take over most of the country. Given here if you care to read the excuses. None of those reasons work under the tiniest of scrutiny. And everyone had no idea what they were doing besides holding territory against the Bolsheviks. On the same day as World War I's armistice, a huge fight happened in Archangel Oblast, with Americans fighting Soviets led by Trotsky himself Holy on their own shit. native soil. The battle is hilariously called the Battle of Armistice Day, or Peace Day's Bloody Battle. <laughs> so much irony in that. Yeah. And what a... Peace Day's bloody battle. Holy Travesty the entire and Russian Trotsky intervention was, was leading and those it continued troops. until 1920 and ended in a clear military defeat for the US. But we did achieve wow. victory in World War I. So Wilson sailed away from America <laughs> to like, participate hey, in enough. the Versailles Treaty negotiations, a presidential first. And of course, he failed to live up to his ideology when he let international borders Sykes be become. drawn by Europeans past massive punitive actions against Germany that would ultimately fail to stymie another world war and ignore dozens of I mean this is something that I think it's talked about sometimes but I don't know if it's talked enough was the treaty of versailles really that harsh because the ottoman empire and austria hungary were dissolved the german empire was allowed to remain to keep existing uh, well, no, not as an empire, as a, the, as a republic, but still, I'm, I'm not entirely sure it was extremely Some harsh in Germany. begging for his attention for the newly drawn world, including numerous representatives from Russia, Ho Chi Minh from Indochina, and worst of all, civil rights leaders from his oh, own country. My God. Instead, he just wanted to get the whole League of Civil Rights yeah, Leaders that's... from his own country. Instead, he just wanted to get the whole League of Nations thing going, and he did. But the U.S. had already grown wary of this. Republicans blocked the ratification join. of the treaty for the League of Nations. And Wilson spent his final year and a half in office working himself raw trying to get the League of Nations off the ground. He even had another seizure and oh practically God. went comatose. Supposedly, his wife, whom he'd actually married during the presidency, kind of ran the executive... A lot of people say, hey, uh, Elizabeth Wilson, the first female president, because... Um, I, I think we don't really know if she was making all the decisions. 
uh, but it, it branch it for half been. a year as a result. Yeah, though that is heavily debated. Yeah, but of course, America never joined the League of Nations. Instead of promoting that failure, he could have helped people during the 1919 Red Scare. But the executive branch did absolutely nothing to help out in he what a lot I of good call videos. America's craziest year. Nothing useful at all. He could have supported women's suffrage and helped the 19th Amendment along. He could have prevented some of the racial violence of the Red Summer. Maybe helped hundreds of people who were persecuted for being socialists. Ended the Russian intervention in a timely manner. Stopped the MID and APL and soon to be um, FBI spying from using their, their resources to hunt Bolsheviks. Or he could have even stopped the mess that he helped create with the rise of the Ku Klux Klan. Alas, with all the power that he had amassed during his presidency, he did nothing. The only good thing he did was try to stop prohibition from being enforced, but Congress overrode his veto. After he recovered I mean, from his one, coma, one he acted thing. like an early lame duck and did absolutely nothing for the rest of his presidency. He lasted for three more years after that and died of a stroke in 1924. Well, that would seem to be the end of Woodrow Wilson, but he left a hell of a wake. Wilsonianism, as in international policy on the basis of ideology that often leads to spurious wars, is still a major part of US foreign relations. Realists have tried to dislodge it, but it stays, festering in politicians' minds. How could they resist asserting American hegemony to make the world safe for democracy? <sighs> he also perverted liberalism into empowering the government for the sake of our new freedoms, while underwriting it all with the institution of Jim Crow at the federal level. What a great legacy he's left. Essentially, his legacy is U.S. interventionism, which has led to the loss of thousands upon thousands of lives under stupid circumstances, and federal racism. Good job, Wilson. <laughs> One more thing! Alright, I know I've used good old Willie as a rhetorical punching bag here, but he does deserve it. After all, he was a historian. He is a prime example of what bad history can do. Obviously, I don't have much nice to say about him. He was a bad historian who rose to power for the sake of pushing the ideology he had come up with as a result of his historical interpretations. Those historical interpretations person, pushed dude. him into creating a new form of imperialism and a very racist policy to underlie all of it. He left an indelible and ultimately malignant mark on US history. I can think of no president who has left such a lingering mark that has damaged US history forever. God damn it, Wilson. <laughs> Whoa. Well, holy shit, that was actually really good. I really enjoyed this video. Uh, all credits to the cynical historian for making this video. It was awesome, so go subscribe to him. Uh, also, he seems like he has a lot of interesting videos over here. Uh, the Mexican with the border war with Mexico, the U.S. invading Russia, the 1919 Red Scare, which, yeah, I've actually heard this was a pretty crazy year for, for, for the U.S. in general. The, the border war only has 26,000 views. Damn. Well, what the hell, bro? Uh, either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. If you have anything in mind to react to, let me know. I'm, I'm, I'm working on the China's reckoning reactions. And, yeah. See you guys out.